emphatically, but there's nothing we can. I like that word do because in the Hebraic it is asa. It is to fashion, to form, and to shape. So there is nothing we can form, fashion, or shape without the power of Almighty Yah because life and death and the power of deliverance it is in the hands, the yards of Almighty Yah. So we are not even creatures of our own breath or our own destiny that these false deceivers of darkness are teaching the people today. It is wrong. It is asinine to our spiritual growth and our health. It does not produce anything but what the God of one's belly desire. It doesn't satisfy the Most High Yah. It is vitally important that we realize that as a nation of people, there is nothing we can do without the knowledge of your sure Hamashiach. I don't give a damn what these false ones that call themselves Hebrews, Israelites, and that are purporting this most damnable, vile doctrine of hell, that it is Yah and Yah alone. It is Yah and Yah alone. His word stands alone. The power of the manifestation of that true living Torah in Yahshua. There is no other man. I don't give a damn if it's Buddha, Confucius, Muhammad. None of them can even tire the laces of the shoes. Yahshua HaMashiach. These doctrines are proliferating their teachings of darkness they have come up out of the belly of deceit and hell it has not arisen from the formats of the instructions of the Torah and we that are Yisraya we must be wise as we try to entertain our own damnable twisted intellect we began to compromise and question the authenticity of the writing of the book, the whole Sefer, not just the Old Covenant, but the Brit Hadassah, that there will be no excuse for us as a nation of people to say that I did not know. You cannot declare that now at one time. you winked at our ignorance. But now he savah, he command uh, all men everywhere to shub, to turn around from their wicked, vile, corrupt ways that spew nothing but poisonous of vile death in everything that it touch. We must be followers of his Torah. And he has laid down the pattern, the tazneeth, men of strength and beauty and character and they were men and not boys they were strong and valiant and vibrant and they were not boys we find that today there's one thing that troubled me more than anything where are the men today you don't find a man with the power and the richness of torah the testimony, the Ezah of Yahshua HaMashiach, it is in his mind. He has time for every damn thing. The basketball, the football, golfing, and everything but your internet, poll net, pornography net. But everything but Yah. Nothing, no time for Yah. Time for work and Walmart, Kmart, Dollar Mart. Store Mart, Fashion Mart, but no time for Yah at all. We can see the demise in the conscience of what we call man today. They're weak, and I will not take that back. They're imbecile. They're worse than children. You see the beauty of these children today when they stood 
and they know they're before the camera how they dance and they shine for the honor of Yah. Yet the man is the brilliancy of the light of Hamashiach. He is the brilliancy of that light. Where a man says he loves Yah and defies the mitzvah of Yah, he is a damn liar. He is a damn twisted pervert. I don't care who the man is. This is a wicked world. They love things that are foolish. I want to say this before I greet our listeners again. There are those that join our or subscribe to our YouTube uh, videos that we put up. I never look at them. I may listen to the up, but once I say what I've said, it's settled in my bosom. I don't need to hear it again because I've heard it from the beginning. And so there are those that subscribe to our channel that I will not even uh, commit to subscribing to them. Because I go on or I click on the subscription and I see some of the things that they have which are repugnant. But one day there was one that subscribed to our video and it led me to a video. I want to say this. That this man was supposed to be a bishop. He was every bit 475 to 520 pounds. The man could not even stand up. He was a young man. He was not in his 50s or 60s. He was in his latter 30s or very early 40s. And I said to my issue, I want you to see this. Look at this. It was about five, eight minutes. And the grotesqueness of this man that his legs were so disproportionately, he could not even stand up. He looked worse than a hog. Not a hog, but a hog. And he is telling everyone that it's not funny. This is not a place of sporting as Proverbs warns us. It's not a place of jocularity and we think funny. I'm talking a serious matter. He looked like a damn beast. And he is prophesying to everyone what, quote, God the Lord said, do, unquote. And behind him is this mother. She is the pastor. He is the bishop. This woman that she was not far removed from his size. And all around him you could see these effeminate acting men. Boys what they were. They were not men. These effeminate Things and creatures. Uh, you could see it in the way they were dancing. You could see it in the way that, that, they, that they ushered onto this beast of a thing. And this grotesque woman in his, her own appearances. Uh, they are prophesying to the people what thus saith God. And I said to my issue, you would think that the first thing. Uh, if their God was real, damn their God of a hog. Uh, He's a damn dog. You would think the first thing that God would say to that beast of a man. Uh, that you don't represent that which is of vitality and vibrant and with strength. You look like a damn beast. You would think to this woman that and that's the way women are too as well. Uh, and I find it some of the most grotesque looking women. Uh, that they're always talking about what Yah is saying to them. The first thing he would tell you, Bath, is to get yourself in order and submit and shut your damn mouth. He would tell you to get some of that hogwash off of you. And I don't care who I offend. If I offend you, I don't give a damn. It's time that we mature and maturate and grow up. As I said to us, I watch those ball players about a three minute clip. I watch them what they did unto the other ball player. And you know what he would say all the time? These are veterans. 
they know. There is only one thing I can get from them is knowledge of this process. He never, in all of the little clips they showed, he never frowned. He never looked at them. They would grab him as though that he was a child. And these men were not much older than him. But he had the ability to adhere. And their resounding response to his character was, uh, he is strong here. He takes every kind of rebuke and criticism uh, and he garners that uh, in his storage bin and he feeds off that we are weak, wicked people. We don't want no correction. We don't even want you all to interfere with our wicked ways. And that's the truth. So here this grotesque fat woman looking like a hog. And see with all this prophecy. Well thus saith the Lord God that you shall. I say this Jezebel. You find that among ignorant women today. They will tell you Yah is always speaking to them. No he's telling you honey. Listen to me. You understand. You hear the strength of a man. Lose some damn weight you fat hog. Now, if that offend you, just be offended. Then began to transition. There is no way that Yah is going to allow me to look like a beast. No discipline. No discipline. I eat like a hog and my gut hangs down over my belt. That's wrong. You call yourself a woman of Yah, you're a prophetess. And you look worse than that. That man could not get up. I said, the only thing he does all day is sit around, watch the stories, play on the internet, and it was a whole house full of women. And you know they feed him with ham hocks and bacon, pork chops, collard greens with neck bones, rice, and that's all he does. He eats like a hog. Yah made the animals to eat with the discipline. And then when they got to a certain size, they have maxed out. What man has done, he has defied that. So he feeds them steroids. That they may grow and maximize the weight of a beast. Whereby the beast is not even fertile, cannot produce even those that are the exact of its kind. And individuals of that nature, they produce those or who they inspire are those of that same nature. If you do not have a spirit of a warrior, you're not going to, you're not going to be satisfied with me. If you're not one that is willing to fight for the cause of Yah without asking questions, you're not going to be satisfied with the true messenger of strength. You want someone that is as weak as you. You want to be around those that are pliable. You can alter or change their expression because that's the way you are. So when you find someone that is not intimidated, he doesn't alter his stance. Ever since I've been a young preacher, I've been preaching like this. I may have been ignorant, but my preaching has not changed in over 30 some years. The truth of it has evolved in a beautiful way, but I have not changed. You may change, but I do not change. Does y'all change? That's why we sons of y'all cope, we're not consumed. And this is what is this is what is impregnating the minds of many. If I'm a man standing before you without discipline, how can I inspire you to have discipline? That's why I say to us here in Teshua, we must be inspired to, to inspire those that come among us. That they can see the refined nature of Yah in Yahshua among us. And our wives must be representatives of that state of mind of the man. You see this young daughter here, I put her at this table with them for what reason? Do you all understand why I put her there? I put her there for one reason. That she may see the beauty of a man, a husband, and the submissiveness of a wife. That she may understand the beauty of that. Not folly, no damn laughter. We don't have time to laugh. We have no time to laugh. 
We must be sober. The men must be sober. They must be vigilant and diligent about the affairs of Yah. That's what we must be. And the bath it is, I must, uh, they must have the chayil, they must be the chayil bath, the bath of strength. And the beauty of the constitution of the home. Not some two cent harlot. These weak, shiftless things that we call men today, they're not men. Hallelujah. They get upset with me, my son. And they will unsubscribe to our newsletters. They will send me scaling letters as to correct me. And the fact of the matter, my ach, they don't give one damn penny. And they have listened over the years, and the fire has just become too hot. And they cannot handle the heat. The Torah of Yah is a consuming. It is an achkal. It is the devouring fire. It burns. We have learned the ways of the world so precisely. We have no shame of our wickedness, our actions. Well, I'm going to get into the teaching. And our attitude, there is no repentance in it. Something is deeply, drastically twisted in your mind. Something is twisted in your bosom. You cannot see the error of your own ways. Something is wrong. Because if we would pay attention to us and judge us, you won't have any need for anyone to judge you. You have no need for any man to judge you, to correct you. If we did that, but we don't. As the old song says, sweep around your own front door. No, you need to sweep your damn dirty house first. Before you sweep around my front door steps, you need to sweep out the filth and the wickedness of your own life. And you do that by impelling. You must destroy the nature. The nature of the life of the spirit that gives you inspiration. You need to be impelled, destroy. Even your flesh and the ruach that guides you into undisciplined actions that are against Yah. We got an excuse for everything, but when it comes to Yah, we make no excuse for Him. We prepare ourselves to do everything. When it comes to Yah, we don't do that. That's why I said to the little ones, sing before us and dance. Because they are unabashedly unashamed. I like that. I love that. And all of our babies should be taught that. That's why I say put them down. Let them dance. Let them sing. Raphael said don't get up there. No, let her go up there. Let her go up there and sing in front. Let the people see it. So what? That's all right. It's either we're doing an ambical job or we're not. And we all must give an account of all the things that have been done in our flesh. You let the enemy deceive you. That's why these kinds of people are being raised up by the tens of thousands. You can buy them a nickel a dozen. Men that have no discipline, no strength of character. They're not even of the nature of a hog. The matter of fact, the system is worse than a hog. Because it takes a hog, it's amazing what Yah has done. It takes a cow, a goat, a sheep with the double stomachs and the multiplicity of stomachs. It takes the minimum 12 hours to digest their food. That's why if a cow eats, he, he needs nothing else. That cow can sit there for 12 hours, egurgitate, and chew what we call the cud. But it's not so with a damn pig. Less than four hours a pig has digests all of its food. And that's the way we are. We're just like pigs. We love filth. We eat some this hour, we eat some the next hour. We are aggressive uh, to hear and to eat. Uh, so it is with our physical palate uh, and our appetite. Uh, 
It's no different at all. We don't want that spoken because uh, we got this, uh, we have heaped this, uh, this great adoration upon us. Uh, I say to all men that are wise are the standard of our strength. And she is the high yield of your power. She represents your beauty. She represents your character. And this damn wicked generation doesn't understand that. Uh, that's why he called you all bath. Just like you take a bath. Bath. When you take a bath, do you have uh, do you have a sweet fragrance that you put on fragrance on your body? You all can be hypocrites all you want to, but when you take a bath, uh, you put free sweet fragrance on you, and you emanate a sweetness of fragrance to allure and to draw your companion, your husband. So he calls you bath, bath. This world has taught this nation of Israel to do every damn wicked thing. And that's why the men are effeminate today. The boys are effeminate. They don't have the strength of Yah. Greetings to you all. You think this is just for this little bayad here? It's for you, my friends, that are listening. Because your conditions are in horrendous shape. You understand? So you're not tuned in to this broadcast by some coincidence, some chance, or you want to try to uh, appease or satisfy your flesh. You're in the wrong place. So we greet you all, our enemies, our friends. You that want to repudiate me, that's all right. I give you opportunity to do it, but you just do not do it. We greet you all, our gatherings of the Yisraelites, Gerushim there in Los Angeles, California with our Ak Charles. We greet you all as you gather there on the Shabbat, our Zachin Taon there in Memphis, Tennessee, and all of you, wherever you're gathering in your home, our Ak Lester, our Ak Yaakov there in Texas, my precious friend and our fellow laborer there, Ach Mikaya, is Isha Mikayala and their son is Evaniah. We greet you all. We greet you, our Emer Oprah, as well as our precious Ochot Mariana. And that's not her name, but that's the way I enunciate it. And she says, that's all right for Riak to do that because I believe her grandfather, he called her the same name. So I like that name hallelujah and so we greet you all in all the difficulties listen Yisraya we're not going to go unscathed our wickedness is worse than the world because we have the light of the Torah before us and so the whole world is groaning and mourning uh, until the day of the redemption of Yah draweth night and that's why we have this kind of weather. Y'all never intended for it to be this unbearable. It is sin, the greed, the toxicity, the vehicles, and everyone going to and fro to satisfy their damn lust and their flesh. And so look at the conditions now. Our bodies cannot even handle this. Our bodies cannot even uh, absorb. It is one thing that the sun and the heat is a, it is a friend of man. Because it pulls out everything that is not friendly in your body. That's what it does. It is a purger. It is a cleanser. It is the fire of Yah. It is his shemesh. His burning Torah. And that's what the Torah does. So we greet you all in your shoes, mighty name. We're going to continue in the process. It's hot everywhere. I don't care where you go in the United States. Only a few places. Places like Bangor, Maine. And it's in the 80s there. And places like San Fernando, California, Los Angeles. But it's still hot there. So it's hot everywhere. I had someone to call me the other day and they wanted to know about the weather here. I said, my friend, do a little research. You can find out the weather here in this area. We're in the south. It gets hot. And it's hot here now 
just like it is where you are. So it's hot. These are the type of questions that people, they don't even consider. The asinine questions that are not even relevant. Uh, and they will take up my time for that. It's hot. Bottom line, it's hot. And when it gets cold, it gets cold. May not be as cold as Chicago, but it's cold to us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's cold. But there's a day that is coming where the fire of y'all shall burn. Like an inferno upon the earth. It shall burn. And consume all the dross. It's not going to rid the dross. It's going to consume it. That's a fire. Not separating the dross. It's going to consume it. And that's what we need in our lives. Yeah. Hallelujah. I want to be gone in the verse that I have stated the last two or three Shabbats here in Gilgana Revelation. I want this to be the reference of the direction that I will take during the course of this time. And there are things that I will point out. You can never understand the totality of the event unless you understand the events that culminate into the totality of the full sum of all the matters. So you cannot teach your children the alphabets backwards. It is difficult to learn. And so you cannot understand the end time, the scenarios, uh, unless you understand what proceeds before that and what has caused this off. This anger that is a king resentment in the mind of Yah to have this kind of sonye, uh, this kind of hatred. We must understand. It must be revealed unto us. We must see it, Yisrael, we must. And so I'm going to take my time, I am, whether you buy it or not. But it says here in the book of Gilgana, Revelation. Revelation chapter 13, verse 17. He gives us a vivid account of what shall be. And we can study the book of Gilgana from chapter 1 to chapter 13. It has nothing to do with one able to buy bread or food. This is all about the shekha. It is about an offering of oblation to acknowledge, to recognize. That is why Hashatam, one of the most prominent events in the Brit Hadassah, when he tried Yahshua, and there was only one thing that he wanted from him, the recognition that he was the God of this Olam. And it could only be proven is that the power of the living Torah bows unto the mandate of Hashatan. So do we as a nation of people? We bow unto the spirit of the world when it comes to the Torah? Do we abandon the Torah when there are situations that the Torah speaks against? We ought not to operate in, we ought not to do, that we hide that Torah and we perform that which is of the God of our belly. Yeah. So the issue was with our shatan, was it about the things of the earth? It was about fall down, bow down. Show me the excellence of your power. Show me who you are because I know who I am. I am the covering. Was he not the covering milak of the kingdom? He was a seraphim. And so is he the seraphim of the earth. He is the covering of the minds of the world today. The whole earth. Not just some, but the whole earth. He covers their minds with indignation and great anxiety and agony of fight against the Torah of Yah. That's why they love their damn Jesus. I am not going to stop saying that. I will not give credibility, credibility to that. I don't give a damn if I offend the Jesus thumpers. 
I will show us something today. Is your all truth? What he says is it the truth? Okay, I will show you something. It says in Gilead now, and that no man might be able to Hana. Again, I want to reiterate the meaning of Hana. It is not buying some Skittles. It is not going out buying some cereals and milk uh, to eat your breakfast. Uh, he says that no man will be able to uh, Hana. It is the ability to originate, as I've read, uh, the definitive of this. Uh, the power of creating, uh, but the emphasis is on the ability to redeem his people. It is the ability to acquire knowledge, wisdom, uh, and the understanding of Yah that you may create as we sing. Uh, create in me a clean heart as thy wheat uttered. And renew the right ruach in me. You can't buy this truth. We're coming to a time where the ears were in that era. Where people will not buy truth. They will buy lies. They will not buy wisdom. They will not buy the knowledge of God. They love lies. They fixate themselves on lies and folly. You can sell comedy and jocularity all day long. I can get up here and act like a jackass, a clown, and have you laughing. You will love that. I say to all you, Beth, there is nothing more insidious uh, and more corrupt and wicked than for a laughing woman of jocularity. If you do that, don't do it. That's not a beauty. Don't do it. It's not a time to laugh. It's time for the Baptist Ion to be weeping. For their sons and their daughters of Yisrael. Need to weep between the pillars and the porches. You know, there are people that want to visit here. They come here and they will think, I'm a man of observation. And once I see someone, I can tell a whole lot about them. I can. Once I see them, I can tell a lot. Well, most of the time it's disappointing because uh, they have the rhetoric of speech as though that they are, are the possessors. And then when you lay eyes on them, no, it's not judging after the seeing of the flesh. I just ruach. I'm not one that laugh and talk and speak with women and talk with them. Why? Because that's the job of the Baptist Zion. That silly thing that came here some weeks ago. Uh, I said, talk to my Isha, she will guide you. She is the excellence of my strength. She is the excellence of my strength. I listen to her wisdom when we talk. She will tell the same thing that I will tell her. So I want to talk to you. No, talk to her. She will help you. Don't worry about a thing. But this is a generation that thinks that he or she possess much. You can tell a lot about the character of a man or a woman by the way they express themselves and the way they walk. You can tell a street walking whore. Sure you can. You tell me you can't tell an effeminate man by the way he walks? All right then. And there's nothing more vile than a robust Loud mouth woman. She is loud, she is silly, and she does a no damn thing. That's what a foolish woman is. And that's what this assembly is. It's foolish. It does a no damn thing. It's silly. It's foolish. It loves laughter and folly. I'm going this way because I know it's the will of Yah. Man. So no man might be able to buy. They will not be able to acquire the knowledge, the understanding to redeem it's going to be a time of great Hoshach darkness. It's going to be a time known as Yaakov trouble. A great affliction. It shall be what we know as a Sarah. Irin at the straight and narrow path. It is a gate that whereby it is defined. It is narrow. It is straight. And there are trials and afflictions. Where we irin through the presence of Omar. Through the gate that he has ordained a command for us. So it's a time of great afflictions. 
And no one is going to be able to pray for their sons or their daughters. We're not doing a decent job on that today. Because if your prayer was fervent, you would see that in the actions of your own life. And our prayer is not fervent. We've learned that from this dirty hole. Oh, I'll just pray for them. What a damn lie. One makes the pala, the tifirath of Yah. It is one that is earnest of supplication. We just don't do it. He said, no man shall be able to ga'al. No man is going to be able to sell, to redeem themselves. You have no power to redeem yourself. In these damnable, twisted, gold and silver Thumpers, the liars. I'm going to read one verse to show you the lie that they are purporting among the people and the nations. I will ask you a question to resolve it in your own mind. It is already resolved in my heart and even in this preaching. You think that Yah would give to the wicked the knowledge of the true sign that shall be? He gives that, he reveals his lacks, his secrets. His mysteries uh, unto the nombi, the navi'im. And so you tell me he's revealing this to these wicked uh, money-grubbing dogs uh, that are promoting by gold and silver. It is all kasef. It is money. It all has the same meaning. It is defined by the same word, kasef. And yet to the true messengers... Uh, they are not extolling us to buy gold and silver. Then what were those that take the fiat currency? Uh, what are they doing with the fiat currency? Why do they want that? Why not barter for silver and gold? Because they're full of deceit and lies. And we are so damn gullible we buy their lies. We won't buy truth. No man is going to be able to redeem themselves. They're going to take their gold and their silver and cast it in the street. Look at the dollar today. Look at what we call the fear. Look at the currency today. It's amazing that, let me say this and I will proceed. That we have these gold companies from Canada working in this area. And they are leasing the land all around us for $100 a year. And they want to lease it for 10 years. They have all the inroads with the political uh, cohorts establishment. And so they say, after 10 years, we want to buy the land and we'll give you three times what the land is worth. Well, we're in the rural south. What is this land worth? What is the value of it? You can inflate it all you want to for the purpose of taxes, uh, but the land is of little value. Well, come on, this structure here, it is of little value, but to us it's of great value. And so this is what we want to do. We, we have leased land from this person, from that person, all around you, and you all have a, a substantial amount of land. And so I'm looking at this man. And I'm looking at the deceit of this beast. I say, yes, how much money or the residuals were those that if you find gold on the land, what would they get? Oh, they will get 3%. So I say to him, bring me the information, the contract. I want to see it. Let me look at it. I have someone that I have that will look at it for me. You bring that to me. Of course, they called me back. You know what they said? Well, for right now, we don't want you all's land. We have enough around you. You understand? These are greedy dogs. They have invested money not to find gold today or tomorrow or next week, but 10 20, 25 years down the road. They have millions to invest, so they're looking for their children, children to recoup from that. 
So we must provide for our children, children. We must provide until the day of redemption. You understand? So there is no way that you are going to be able to buy or sell. Your silver will buy you nothing. Your gold will buy you nothing. Yah is fair, isn't he? And so this calamity shall come upon all the earth. Not just certain parts. Upon the whole of the earth. It shall no man shall be able to buy or sell unless save except he that had, that had, that possessed the mark, the oath of the name of the beast and the number of his name. Whose mind, whose conscience, whose loyalty is not unto Yah. But unto the powers of hell, whereby they deny the power of his name. And they cleave whole unto these pagan identities like Jesus and Lord God and the Lord Jesus Christ and the Christos. Their minds are corrupt and they're wicked. And that Jesus is not going to buy you redemption. You can sell him all you want to. You will find the redemption in Jesus. We're going to find it in the power of his name. And he has a name. And at the latter end, he brings Yisra'ah into the fullness of that name. Just like he did in Misraim. At the latter end, when he was bringing them out, he brought them to the power of the fullness of that name. And he raised up one that would bring forth the utterance of his Torah. His name was Moshe. That's why he was given that, that, that name of Misraim. To mean watery and bushy or some watery. He is the living water. He brought forth the living water of Almighty Yah in Yeshua HaMashiach. That the revelation shall be upon their children. And we are the children of those that came out of Misraim. And we should understand that. And there shall be prophets among us to speak with, with great utterance of the time and the season that we are in. So you'll know when you get all of the grain into the, into the garden of the barn. That you may begin to thrush. And to make sure we have fruit. We must be thrush. We must be thrush. Because your sure is coming for the abundance of fruit. The peri, he's not coming for little. And he's given us much. And much is required. I want to direct your attention to the prophets. Amos. So Amos. Yeah, Amos. Here in the, the ninth chapter. Just one verse I want to read. All of this is important. Let me read. Let me read uh, these verses. Verse 8 through verse 11. Quickly. Hear the mighty nor be of your see the time of the end and the time that was upon uh, Yisra'ah. That's why Yah allow us uh, to go through many trials. We know that the trying of our imona, the trying of our faith shall bring us forth as uh, pure gold. And we shall take the goal of our imona to buy the knowledge of Yah, to buy the wisdom of Yah, to buy the understanding of Yah. It is the power of that that redeem us uh, from, the, from the powers of darkness. Uh, no money can do that, Yisra'ah. And when there is a need of bread of lecham to offer up the offering unto Yah, we go and buy bread from Yah. That he fill our love with the fatness of the satisfaction of his tav and his kindness. And we lift up our voices unto him and cry, Torah to the Yah ar so he began to reveal unto Amos yeah, the end time and the times uh, of his people and his nation, the reason uh, that they shall be uh, and the reason why these things shall be. In the book of Amos, uh, chapter 9, verse 7. Let me begin. Yah says, Are not you the children of the Ethiopians uh, unto me? O children of Yisraeli, are you are not a people? That's like unto those uh, that are of Cush, you the Cushites of Ethiopia, unto me, saith Yah. He said, have not I brought up Yisra'ya out of the land of Misra'yam? Have he not, has he not brought us up out of the dungeons of our darkness and our sins and our wicked practices? He said, and the Philistines uh, from uh, Hathor, 
and the Syri Syrians from Kerr. He says this, Behold, the iron, the eyes of Yah are upon the sinful kingdom. Is not this nation a sinful kingdom? It's full of loss and wickedness and lies and greed. His eyes are upon the sinful kingdom. Yisrael is a rebellious, sinful kingdom. We sin against Yah. We rebel. We defy the order of Almighty Yah in Yahshua. He said, my eyes are upon the sinful kingdom. Yah says, I will shachat. I will utterly destroy it from off the face of the earth. There's a kingdom that the Torah talks about, this fourth kingdom. It shall rise up. It shall be more diverse. That's what the word of Yah says. It shall be more shina, more diverse than any kingdom before it. No other kingdom, the rule, the power. The mindset, the ability to alter our minds. This kingdom has the power to alter our minds overnight. It calls us all to believe a lie. But yet the truth, we will not buy it. It alters our thinking, how we process things. This is a mind thing. This is a mind thing to take power and control over the mind. It will be a kingdom that is more diverse, more sinner. He said, I will destroy from all the face of the earth. He said, saving or accept that I will not. This is our saving mercies here. That I will not utterly destroy the house of Yisrael ya Yaakov, says Yah. That is what our Zachin Yarami Yah has been trying to point out unto us the fire of the trial. He said, I'm going to destroy the nations. I'm going to destroy the whole earth, but yet there shall be a bochir, a remnant at the house of Yisrael. That I shall show favor and kindness because of my promises unto Avraham, Yusyak, and Yaakov. We better know that we are Yisrael. And you're only going to know that because you have a great delight in the Torah of Yah. Because uh, when you hear the Torah of Emet, uh, it calls uh, this life to arise. And you cause the power of the testimony of Yahshua to make your heart afresh and cause you to rejoice. When we get to the point where there is no excitement about Yah, when we are all humdrum and dead, and yet we get excited about damn Walmart and Kmart and a damn dollar mart or three dollar bill. Uh, and yet we don't get excited about the riches of Yah, his Esha, his riches of Shalom, his riches uh, that our minds uh, are, are healthy and heal, uh, that we are happy with the riches uh, of the blessings of the testimony of Yah. He is mighty. There's no one like him. And here we get excited about a damn dollar store pulling through rags and finding someone else's rags. Yet when it comes to Yah, we don't give a damn. That's the nature of his people. He said, yet I will not utterly destroy Yisrael, Yaakov says, Yah. He says, for I want you to understand, I will, I will command. This is what Yah shall do. I will command and I will sift. I will sift. I will sift. I don't know if you all use a sifter there in the, okay, so your hopes, no. Most men don't know. I will watch my grandmother sift that flour and she will sift it down not one bit. When it was thrown away, it was of no serviceable purpose. But she would sift it more than one time, more than twice. It depended on what she was making. And she would sift and refine. Yah says, I'm going to refine. He said, I'm going to sift Habeat Yisraya, the house of Is Israel among all nations. You damn liars that say that Israel and the very essence of that nation is here. You that say that the essence of Israel is in Britain and London, Britain and France, and what we call the Anglo nations, you are a damn liar. Yah says, I will sift 
Yisraya among call the whole of all Goim, all heathen nations, because that's where they're found. This nation is a nation of heathens. When a people come and destroy and kill and rob and steal every damn thing, that's a heathen. When a people come and pollute everything, the water, the air, we got such temperature today that uh, people are dying that even the heavens, uh, uh, even the atmosphere cannot stand it. Uh, it groans and moans uh, that torrential rains uh, and the power of heat. Uh, Trying to dispel this damn uh, filth that this wicked man uh, has done to the creation of you. Yeah. We are part of it. We love it. Come out of her, my people. Separate yourself. Did he say, he says, I will save all nations. Does he say that? He did not just say the land of Yisrael or America. He did not say Great Britain or just China. Yah says, I will sift all nations. Like as corn is sift in a sieve. Yet shall not the least grain fall upon the earth. Not the least among the house of Israel shall fall away from Yah. You shall declare, Abba, all you have given me, I've lost none except the Son. A perdition. He has sealed us. And the seal as our Zakin Yaramaya has uh, confronted us. He has dialogued with us. He has preached to us. Uh, he has yelled at us. He has taught us. Uh, he has rebuked us. Uh, it is the trial of the fiery furnace uh, of the time of Yaakov uh, trouble of the Sarah, the straight and the narrow place that he is going to put Israel in. Uh, you, you, you're not going to worry about no bread in that hour. You're going to try to bar and redeem your mouth. From all the bondage of hell. That's what it's about. Uh, it's not a bond, some damn bread or some pork fat. It's greater than that. He says, not one grain. He's going to sift. And you needed the fine flour for the Zabach, the offering unto Yah. You had to sift it and to make sure it was sift. And before you did that, you had to bring it into the garner uh, on the threshing floor. You had to thresh uh, and make sure the shaft was taken from among that. He said, I shall sift it in a sieve. He said, yes, shall not the least of the grain shall fall to the earth. Listen in verse 10. He says, all, not some, all the sinners. What is a sinner? If a man transgresses or fish defies with deliberation with energy with aspiration the Torah when one defies the mitzvah he tell us to Zakah Shabbats when a man defies keeping the Shabbat when one defies his name and they purport this damn twisted lie, Jesus Christ. Uh, and they walk in that. And some of these beasts looking like hogs uh, will name themselves in a Hebrew name. Uh, but yet they will say, you don't have to call him Yoshua. But you want to be called Obadiah. You want to be called uh, Yaramiah. You want to be called uh, Mahaleah. Use that as an example, Yisra'ya. He says, all the sinners, uh, not of the world. Uh, he said, all the sinners are my, the possession of my people. Uh, he said, they shall die by the sword. They're going to die by the word. For there shall arise two in the city of Yerushalayim, and they shall speak profoundly. It's not going to be a damn faggot man or a damn twisted Jezebel of a woman. Yeah. These are the nobis, or the no, noviim, the nobi of Yah, the noviim. They are prophets, the messengers of truth. And they shall stand in the gap. And they shall stand for the kingdom of Almighty Yah. 
And in a true prophet today stands for that. His utterance is not like a reach. It is not like a murray. It is not like a bearer of truth. And everywhere you go, everybody is a damn prophet today, isn't it? Sure it is. The utterance and the soundness of their doctrine is based upon a profoundness of the interaction with God and the power of the testimony of Yahshua. Not in some damnable theological institution that denies the mitzvah of Yah and all the sinners of my people. For we know that sin is a transgression when you defy the Torah of Yah. And all the sinners of my people, they are going to die by the sword, which says, which say this, the evil shall not overtake us, nor shall it prevent us to do what we want to do. No one is going to stop me. No one going to instruct me. But Yah says to you, Yisrael, in that day, He said, I will raise up the bed. We shall gather in the heart of Yah. I will raise up the bed, the tabernacle of Jaiweed that is fallen. Hallelujah. He says, and close up the breaches. The cracks and everything that caused disturbance and cracks in the foundation. They're coming out. I'm going to read you of that. He said, I will close up the breaches thereof. And I will raise up his ruins. And I will build it as in the days of old. Hallelujah. He said, I'm going to restore my house. He made. He brought out. He created in the heart of Yisrael a lineage that we will be a people to offer up to him the great offerings of accolades and praises. That nations would see us and we will be a blessing to every nation. You tell me that Yisrael, if we are the dark hue of skin color, if we are Yisrael, Yah said that we should be a blessing to the nations. You tell me we are cursed to the nation or we have been projected or personified as that. That's not what Yah said, Yisrael. It is the damn stupidity of these men and the corruptness of those that believe that they have the power in their theology to instruct in the ways of Yah. It's not so. Yah is the one that raises up the man. He raised up no damn woman to teach a man anything. You can't even teach a young boy how to urinate right, mama. Yeah. Your beauty is to teach your daughter to be a wife. Yes. To keep herself chaste and honorable. Yeah. There are two women here recently. One says she's going to start a tabernacle in another state far from here. Another in a course when I send my letters of strong rebuke. The only thing you need to do is teach the young women how to be wives. And the one did not respond, undoubtedly she has no husband. Because of her damn wicked ways. There is no task more commanding than being a wife. That's why Yah elected you Bath to Zion. And your beauty to express the qualifications of that. You have something that the world will never possess. We're so damn ignorant and so selfish and so unappreciative. That's why she is more precious than rubies. When a man finds a wife, he finds a tough thing. And he has favor with you. You find damn silly women today. Silly as jackasses. Clownish. Full of damn folly. Want to be noticed, a beautiful bath of Tizayona. You don't have to worry about wanting to be noticed. You will be noticed. And I don't give a damn who, who is offended by it. I'm not going to say I don't give a damn. I shut my mind off from the assaults, the accusations, to try to prevent me from opening up this window that Yah will pour out the riches of knowledge unto Yisrael. No one says a damn thing when David Letterman used the word damn. 
No one says a damn thing when Bill Moyer used the word damn. Nobody says a damn word when Katie Couric used the word damn. But if I use the word damn or hell, it is derogative. No one says one word when the rappers, when their babies, their minds are impregnated with their damn lies and their filth. Nobody says anything. And of course, they would write me and say, take from the message, listen to a little soft, sponge daddy, effeminate man. You're listening to a man, the fact of the matter, you just haven't dealt with the man. Yes. You're used to dealing with effeminate boys, so a man, he doesn't fit the same scenario of a boy. Yes. You do this, old man. You know, when the weak men will get offended, you say, I'm not a man. No, you said you're not a man. You said that. Because anytime you question the authority of your manhood, then you're not a man, boy. I don't have to question that. I don't have to question whether I'm a faggot. I don't want to defend faggots. I don't have to defend no faggot. I defend the strength of a man because I'm a man. I defend men. Hallelujah. I want to grab your sippy eye uh, after that beautiful plan and just kiss him on his forehead and say, Mwah! Well, the Torah tells us to greet one another with a chadosh kiss. Hallelujah. Say, that's all right, son. Your faithfulness is a son that will go down in the battle with us. I know that. I can't say that about all, although I've esteemed men. I can't say that. He will go down for us. Hallelujah. That's all right. I like that. I like warriors on my side. I don't like little boys. Hallelujah. That's why you wives have to come up to the expectation in every facet. Even in pelling your flesh and, and destroying the power of it that it doesn't rule over you. That's love there. I'm not going to prophesy smooth things to you. I will not prophesy smooth things. I will prophesy the truth. Hallelujah. I will nava. That's what prophesied is. Nava. Not just speaking words. That's what they did. That's what the Beth did. They prophesied this morning. The singing. That's what prophesying is. Naba. Na naba. So they prophesy. There is nothing I can do with Yeshua on my side. There is nothing I can do without the Torah of Yama Abba. There is nothing. I want to sing a song for you this morning. Mama, I just can't think of it right now. But by the end of the service, I will let me move quickly. Hallelujah. Quickly, quickly turn to the book of Daniel Yah. I want to read this as I proceed, and then I want to get into the crux of this. You all, it's hot out there, so either way we go, it's hot. Hallelujah. Where did I have that? In the book of Daniel, yeah, chapter 7, there's only one, two verses I want to read here. Daniel, yeah. When I get over here sometime, the whole contact of my message changed because, oh, yeah, you know I'm not excellent at finding anything in the book. I am a retard when it comes to that, Yisraya. But the book of Daniel, yeah, he saw a kingdom here. Hallelujah. Verse 21 through 30, 23. I must read that in order to lay the, lay the, the derech, the way that we will proceed from here. The trials of our Imuna. He says here, in the book of Daniel, yeah, chapter 7, verse 21. He says, I beheld this powerful entity of darkness. The same horn, the same strength, this same kingdom authority, the same man, the same uh, judicial process. I saw him make war with the Kiroshim. And he said, and he prevailed against them. He was able to overcome he was able to seduce them and to draw them. He prevailed over them and we'll be in prevail against. So we must allow your sure to rise in our bosom. That's why the powers of hell constantly prevail against us. 
That's why when you want to do right, you can't do right. When you want to be kind to someone, you don't know how to be kind. When you want to show love, you don't know how to show love. When a mind is full of overall iniquity, when a mind is full of iniquity, because iniquity shall abound, the love of many, he uses the words rabah, rabah, much, great, excellent, exceedingly numerous. That's what it means. The love of many shall what? Cold. There's nothing like cold love. You that have experienced marriage, if you had a spouse that was cold, did not want you to touch, embrace, that's cold. That's cold. That's cold. You go to touch, no, don't, don't touch me. I don't want to. I will, man. That's cold. That's brittle, cold, nasty. And that's the love of Yisra'ya today. It's cold, it's brutal. You can feel the coldness of the wickedness when they pass by you. You better search your heart. Hallelujah. 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 He says, I saw this. Power to make war with the Kedoshim and prevail until the Ancient of Days come. And judgment was given unto the Kedoshim of the Most High. And the time came that the Kedoshim possessed the Melkut. We must possess the kingdom of Hashem and suffers Hamas. And it is the Hamas, the violence that overtakes it by force. We must overtake this kingdom of darkness. You're not going to overtake this kingdom but by force. You must overtake the kingdom of Yah. You must resist the opposition. That's why we've been prevailed against. When our minds want to stay fast on Yah, it's every damn thing that is twisted that our minds go to. And every thought prevails against the knowledge of his Torah. Everything is more important than that, Yisraya. We are the ones that prevail only in Yeshua HaMashiach. Do we prevail? And this is the catalyst here. He said, thus I saw the fourth beast. And we will get into more detail of this fourth kingdom as we proceed. I saw the fourth beast... And this I saw the fourth beast shall be the fourth kingdom upon the Olam. He says that this one shall be more Shina. He shall be more Shina, more diverse, more different. He shall have an ability that is far different than, uh, than the other kingdoms. It will be a kingdom, one that is, will frustrate, frustrate the minds of the people. He said one that shall be more diverse from all kingdoms. And it says, it shall devour some of the earth of the whole earth. The whole earth. So those that are in the boonies of the far reaches of land, whether they're in Africa, whether they're in Australia, where they're in the, uh, on the owls of the sea, uh, he said, the power of this kingdom, uh, that every tentacle shall devour the whole earth. So these wicked, rich, I use the word mamzia, these rich, bastards uh, that their wealth has been garnered by incest they have robbed they have killed they have stole uh, these rich bastards uh, that tell this weak-minded america religious minded uh, whore thumping house uh, to buy silver and gold what do you tell the man uh, that is in utter poverty now what do you tell him how does he buy so you tell me that there is no remnant of Yisraya there then why shall the tentacles of the kingdom reach into the whole, gold, all, the full, the sum of it all? Isn't that what the word means? My zakhin, it means the sum, the whole, the totality of all. He says, I saw the power of this kingdom reach into the whole earth. For what? For there is only one reason. To search out, to prevail against all Yisraya. 
to find out every true Hebrew Yisraelite shall be sifted to the sieve. We're going to be tried. We're going to be tried. And there's a reason why, as we will point that out later on. But his tentacles of the power of the kingdom shall reach into the whole Olam, the whole earth. Huaya. And he shall akhal, devour, to consume and to eat ferociously. It will kill, it will destroy, it's going to kill and destroy the whole earth. He says, and shall tread it down, and shall break it. He shall break, he shall shatter it. He shall decha, he shall break it into pieces. It is almost like one breaking a pecan. You want every slither of the meat. And you take a toothpick or something to dig out uh, every bit of the meat that's in the nuts and crannies of, of that shell. Uh, and so he's going to seek out, he has a mission to, to find all Yisra'ya and to destroy and bring them down to the depths of great repentance. Whereby we're going to be able to buy, we're going to be able to buy the knowledge uh, it will be restored unto the mind of Yisra'ya. Yeah. Hallelujah. That which we have rejected and we have denied. But there's a beautiful scenario or a teaching uh, by the writings of Shirak as he expressed unto us why this shall be. Can I read that before I proceed? It says in Shirak, why these great calamities shall be. Shirak chapter 40 verse 8. And Yah said he has pled with all flesh. He will plead with all flesh. But look at how Shirach speaks to us. Shirach chapter 40 verse 8. He said, With all baza, all flesh, both ish and tani, tanim, beasts, and upon sinners seven times. He's talking about the calamities. You will see this. He said, What Yah shall do, it shall come upon them seven times more. Our death, bloodshed, strife, sword, Calamity, famine, tribulations, and plagues. Do you hear that? The Sarah tribulations and plague. And verse 10 tells us why. All, all, all these were created for the wicked. And we are wicked people, are we not? We are Russia. We are criminals when it comes to defending our flesh against the Torah of Yah. We will say, I'm all right. You're not all right, Ak. Tell the truth. Your heart is not right. You're not all right, O Hope. He said, all these things, we better be careful. Not some. All these things were created for the wicked. Yah is angry with the wicked every day. All these things were created for the wicked. And on their account the flood came when Yah poured out his anger his Hana upon the earth it was because of the wicked because the heart of man was only wicked and evil continuously every imagination every thought of his bosom was only wicked and evil continuously if we examine ourselves Yisraya, our thoughts are evil continuously our faults are wicked continuously. Uh, we can't even maintain Yah on our mind without a wicked intervention of the world uh, and the wickedness that prevail against the thoughts of Yah. And this one shall rise up, this fourth kingdom. Uh, we see the anomaly of this kingdom now as we see in America. It shall be great. It shall rise up. Uh, and everything today is to procure worship upon America. They have the stature of liberty. A stature of liberty. There is no liberty but in Yeshua HaMashiach. There is no freedom. We are slaves. Uh, we are under the Shibi or the Shibuth here. We are bound in this nation. We are bound to mortgages, car payments, uh, to college to school we're bound here yeah. we have no liberty in our minds yeah. we're not free Israel yeah. we're bound to a wicked culture there is no culture 
You cultivate things uh, in a culture to, to accentuate the beauty of the culture. What is beautiful about the culture here? Yah says, all these things shall be because of the wicked. Not sinners now. Because of the wicked. Wicked men. Russia. They are the Russia. They're criminals. And they act criminally against Yah. They defy his name. They damn the Shabbat. They work. They labor, they defy it, and they make every kind of damn twisted excuse for their wicked ways. And we as a nation, we embrace them and we strengthen them and we give credence to their actions. Not I, not I, not me. You may, but I will not. There was a precious one called me and was speaking about his circumstance and asked should he go to the assembly, the whole house that his wife goes to? I want your opinion. I say, no way I would do it. I say, you strengthen the hand of the weaker vessel and you go and sit in the house of damn darkness. It's wrong, man. I say, I will not participate. I will not be a part of it. I will not do it. Not one bit. And I will say to her, I'm the man, you follow my excellence and my example. I don't give a damn if you were raised in that environment. It didn't do well for you to be raised in that. We must take a stand for Yah Yisrael. You think I will allow her to tell me we're going to the whole house and I, and I have fellowship with Bile Yael? What has the concourse or what fellowship with Yahweh Bile Yael? Yah has no fellowship with Jesus. He has no fellowship with the lords of the gods. He alone stands. I will not go to the damn dirty houses polluting my mind. Yah said I would that that would be hot. That's what your sure said. I'd rather you be hot or cold. Because you're lukewarm, I'm going to chew you. I'm going to chew you like a piece of meat. I'm going to vomit you up like a dog vomit up filth. I would that that would be hot or cold. But because you're lukewarm, he says I'm going to spill you out of my mouth. You can't play and straddle the fence. You can't be a damn Jesus stopper with those and call yourself a Yahweh is here. It's wrong. It's wicked. I don't give a damn who you are. I don't give a damn who you are. And I will not go sit in a damn Baptist whole house, a Methodist whole house, a Pentecostal whole house, a Church of God whole house, a damn Catholic whole house, no more than the Imam's whole house, or the Muslim whole house, or the damn Jewish whole house, or the temple. I will not sit in any of them. You want me to declare the power of Hamashiach? I will declare it there. Sit down. I don't want nobody behind me. You sit out there. I'm not one that's going to compromise. I did not say to my, uh, well, my friend, you have to be careful. No. You must wound that head. You must kill it. Yeah, you must kill that head, that religious head. You must kill it. You must kill that head. You don't play with that. And that is the truth, Yisrael. The trials that we shall encounter. This will give us the power to buy and sell. Our prayers will be effectual, fervent, with great power. As Zachary Ramaya points out to us, this is to bring us through the purifying process of Yah. Just like the prophet, the Nobi Daniel Yah speaks to us in the 12th chapter of the book of Daniel, chapter 10. He says, and Rab or Rabba, many, much and exceedingly. He said, many shall be bara, many shall be purified. Not only is the purifying process of Yah, it is those that he select to polish. This is what the trial shall do for us. It shall polish us, Yisraya. It shall bara. It shall cleanse us and make us bright. It's going to purify us. He said, many now. A number that no man in his ability could stand and count the number. 
He said, and many shall be purified, and they shall be made Levan. It is not some ethical identity of racial identity here. He uses the word Levan. They're going to be made bright. My Ishaw says to me that when they take the children, I've experienced that. I recall the day that I took them out and, and the accolades, everyone, you all are so beautiful. You're just this. And they will look at Ab because he was walking with me and they would say, and you are handsome too. Well, I didn't walk in walking with the girls. You had to walk with me. I needed a man by my side, a man child. You understand? So let the girls walk with Nani and let him walk with me. Come on, you and I, we use the restroom. Let them go that way and you and I this way. You stand by my side, little man. And they will say to the little ones, you're so beautiful. Oh my, you just look at you all. And she says to me that they even want to just touch their little clothing. Why? Because uh, now, uh, as you're sure as he got a little child uh, and brought them before this religious hoish mindset, unless you become as one of these little ones, uh, we're not going to enter into the kingdom of Yah. We're not Yisra'iyah. That's a fact of the matter. And that's the way we should be. That our lights are so sad in this wicked generation of unbelievers. We should let our light so shine that men may see the power of the testimony of Yahshua in us. And then that they may honor Almighty Yah. They see our damn slothfulness and our wickedness and our damn pride and our folly. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He says, and many shall be made Laban. They shall be made. And the word Laban, I was, I, I was doing a little discovery of that the other day. The word Laban is simply this. It is to be made bright. It is to have the excellence of the brightness to shine forth. But it is also Laban is the process of making bricks. So we need the kiln, don't we? You need the fire on that, don't you? Just like our Zakain was explaining, he made, you remember what he made with the clay? Who remember? What did he make? What did he figure? What did he shape with his hand? Talk so I can hear you. I know what he said he made. He said, I made an animal. And if you don't get all the air bubbles and all of that out of there, then it will crack the heat. And if we don't get this damnable twisted hot air out of us, this wickedness out of us, you're going to crack. And that's a fact of the matter. You're not going to be able to stand the pressure. We don't get this mess out of us. So he gives us time to purge us now by the hearing, by judging us. Correct me in your judgment as the Nobi Yeremiah says. And not in that anger you should bring me to nothing. So he's trying to judge us, to correct us, to let us know what we must do. So when the fiery trial comes, we won't crack under the pressure. Yisrael. And so many shall be made white, not looking like a white man, what we call a white man. He's going to be made the brightness of the image of Yahshua. He's going to be just like a brick in the kill, that a brick that is not, that has not the proper amount of water and everything in it. They call them coals. It is called a bastard brick. It cannot be used because it cannot stand the, the, the range of temperature. Whether it gets too cold, it may crack. If it gets too hot, it can't stand that. So the brick must be made right. And we must be made right. And we must be put in the furnace of the Torah to be made right. This word is a consuming fire. You're going to have to have it to stand that you can buy. You can buy with what? You're going to buy, come and buy me bread. You don't need money. You're going to buy with your, with your imuna. You're going to buy with your prayer, your pala, with your tefirat. Not some damn silver. He will fill your belly with the riches of the lecture of the knowledge of your sure. You haven't eaten it 30 days and your belly is going to be full. He will cause, even as he did Yisra'ya, even the ravens of the sky to bring bread down. And the morsel of bread uh, for his people, he has not changed. I'm not gonna let them sell me this damn lie based upon the fictitious lies uh, of these damn hypocrites. Uh, I will not buy it. Uh, I'm not worried about the nuclear bomb, I'm worried about his fire. His fire is greater. His fire is greater. His fire is greater. Hallelujah. I'm not worried about that. He said, Many shall be tried. But this is our strength. Many shall be saras. We're going to be tested. 
It's going to be proven what we're true with Yah. That is what sa Saraf is. We're going to be tried. We're going to be proven. We're going to be tested to show whose side we're on. You that are on Yah's side, as far as me and my house, we're on Yah's side. As far as my Ishar, I we're on Yah's side. If she don't want to walk on that side, then damn her. Damn her. I'm not going to compromise with the weak vessel. I will mind. She's on your side. She will, I will be a strength to her. Nothing I will not do. Make sure there's wood in the house during the winter because it's going to be nice and easy this year with all the squares we got. I make sure she stays warm. How about that? And if she bring wood in, I will get upset because leave that to me. Let me have that. Let me take the garbage out. I'll do that. There ain't much two things. Come on. There ain't much to that. Hallelujah. I say that with all truthfulness. If she doesn't want and think that she is going to cause me to capitulate and alter and do things to satisfy her, then I deny I damn her because she's going to damn me. She's going to take my strength. She's going to pollute my mind. So damn her. Damn her. And everything about her. Get her out of my mind, out of my thoughts. I don't even want to see her. You don't forgive her. That doesn't mean I have to fellowship with her and break bread with her. Not going to sit down with a Jezebel like that that denies Yah and rejects the truth and the command of her head. And tell me she doesn't see it that way. I don't give a damn what way she sees it. That she's going to take authority over me and show me the directions of Yah. And make Yah a liar. When Yah said that Yah is the head, my head. She will go to hell. She will go to hell. She will go to hell. And that's a fact. And that's a fact. You think she's going to tell me let's go down here to the Baptist thumping whole house? Go to hell, woman. And as long as you're dwelling with me, you're not going to the damn whole house. You go out there and do what you want to, but as long as you're in my domain, I will come on. I'm not afraid to say it. I'm not going to compromise that ark. I don't give a damn what my suffering, my afflictions may be, the things that I may have to endure in my body, but there's one that's greater, that satisfies, and he will supply all that I need. He will give me strength to go through all of the difficulties. I know that a fact. That's a fact. I will not capitulate. Wife, children, sons, daughters, what man would not want a son? Tell me! You think I didn't want a son? I wanted me a son. Give me a child. I'm not offended at y'all. I'm not upset. I'm not dysfunctional because I don't have children. I'm all right. I don't envy him and his son. I, I rejoice it. I like to see them go to daddy. I, oh, man. That, I said, oh, that's so beautiful. Now I can go home. You go home with daddy. I like to see the little one go, the daddy, the little daughter, so precious, all of them, just daddy. You go home now. All right, bye-bye. Give me a hug. Okay. Here, here take, take a peppermint. Go bye, bye. Get them out. Get them out. Hallelujah. We're going to be made purified. Saraf. Hallelujah. He said, but it's one thing, but the wicked, the rasha, those that are hostile. The word wicked is a, an expression of uh, rasha. They are hostile toward Yah and they are criminals found guilty and condemned. He said, but the wicked shall do wickedly. They will do criminal acts. Daniel Yah 12, 10, the wicked shall do wickedly. And he uses the word lo or no, there shall be none, zilch. They will know thou and none of the wicked shall understand. They shall not have the being. They shall not be able to discern. They will not have the ability to discern the time. How is it that these wicked men, they call themselves uh, uh, exchanges of silver and gold, 
Are uh, telling everyone that there are times that are coming by gold, by food, put it up. Yah said the wicked shall not understand. And if a man is a criminal against Yah, if a man denies the Torah, if a man denies, listen, the mitzvah, he got his factories open on the, on the Shabbat, and he closed them down for the damn most vulnerable, devilish, wicked day, Sunday. And he denies the Shabbat, he denies the name of Yah, and he loves his damn Jesus thumping. He is a wicked man. Because when you hear the truth of Yah, you don't get angry, you don't harden your hearts as Yisrael Yah did. You obey. You don't have to understand what you obey, but you obey. You can go to another country. When I was in Germany uh, to get the driver's license, I think it was 150 questions uh, on that test. And you could not miss but five or seven, I think. That's it. They had hundreds of signs there. Not like here. And I think there were about 50 or 60 signs on the test to get your driver's license. I failed it the first time. The second time I came back, the man said, look, look at this question here. Read it. I said, ah, I missed two more than I should have. He said, read the next one. What, what? I said, I, I know the answer. He said, all right, you pass. And so my driving experience in that country, I could just watch the others uh, and go the way they did. And drive right and properly. I could do that. Hallelujah. Just watch them. That's what I could do. So you tell me the Yah wants us to watch the wicked and they show us what to do by food, by gold, by silver. No, it's greater than that. What do you tell that little man on the continent of Africa? Or you tell that poor mother and her son that love Yah in the tundra of, of Russia. Or those that are in some of the far reaches places of the earth. Uh, where by very little interference uh, and in their hearts uh, they practice the law, the Torah of Yah. And they do it with great delight. Uh, our ignorance make us believe that there are none like that, but they are. You're sure, even the Torah teaches us uh, that there are those that are not among us, but they are part of us, Yisrael. Yeah. All of Yisrael is not in this little damn wicked country here. Down in the Dominica, in Jamaica. They're in every nation. And in order for Yah to find them, he got to sift them. He must sift them in the sieve. And not one crumb of the, one crumb, not one true Yisraelite will fall through. Not one. They're going to be utilized for the baking of the cake, the bread offering. And then there shall be a true bread offering, a zabach unto Yah. And it will be the finest of the flowers and the meat offering. That's why we must refine ourselves, Yisrael. We that know to do tough and don't do it, it's a damn sin. You know it's right for me to do right about you, and I don't do right about you. I know it's right for me to serve you, and I say, no, nah, I want you to serve me. No. I said to your issue, although I said, I will go out there and pick him some pizza, but I got so much I'm working. I said, I want to get him somebody get some peaches. I told him, I said, man, you get all the beans you want, you pick them, but there it was. Got you some beans, man. We should serve one another. Submit ourselves unto one another. Serve your ahot. We such a damn wicked generation of people, we don't give a damn. Humble yourself. Anna! Anna! Fight against that spirit that's in you. And do right. Consider one another. Esteem others more highly than you. You see, that's what that ball player did. Even the, even, even the wicked. When he speak wisely, he will be considered as wise. That young man did what was wise. 22 years old? Come here, Ab. Come here, boy. Get on up here. We show you how they do him. This is how they were doing that. But he's a man just like them. This man. Hold up. Come on. Hold up, man. They get to say, hold, hey, hey, hold up. They're all in his face. He's standing there just like him. That's how he, that's how he was doing he didn't resist that. Like, they said, look, man, look, hold up, man. Hold, hold up. Hey, hey whoa, whoa, hold up. Hey, hey come on, man. Like, hey, don't, don't, don't do that. Hold up. You let someone touch you. You're supposed to be a man of Yah. And they said, he's strong. A weak jackass can handle that. A weak jackass of an individual can handle that. You can put a burden on a jackass and the jackass will carry the burden. And yet they did not fight three of them. 
He said, they're wise. They know how to do this. I don't know. And they can only make me better. So he was so bold. You know, 40% of all young people have tattoos today. And they're tattooing. They're putting them on for the dead. Mama, rest in peace, daddy. And he, was, he, he, put, he put on a tattoo on his shoulder, clutch. And they mocked him for that, say he's clutch. But yet he was the man that rescued them when they needed to be rescued. You understand? So those that are least among us, we should esteem them highly. The ones you don't think as much, that's the ones you esteem. Hallelujah. You esteem them. You do right unto them. As much as you have opportunity to do tough unto you. I don't care what situation. I don't care how they do you. I was telling someone other day, I said, I don't care what no one does to me. That doesn't make me do wrong by them. I don't care. I don't care how they do me. There's nothing they can do to hurt me. Nothing. Whether they take money, whether they take from me, whether they... they, they come on, that's, that, that ain't nothing to me. Whether someone says something to hurt your little damn penny feelings, what are your feelings? Our feelings don't mean nothing. It's just like a, just like a puff of smoke. It's here, okay, it's gone. You got to get over your juvenile feelings. We cannot hold because of that, because we have, uh, we have, uh, we have, we have this rick, wicked nation. That's why we don't understand what God's doing. And the wicked shall not be, they shall not understand. They shall not be able to discern. They shall not have the knowledge of God. They will do wickedly. So that's why we as a nation, you, I, individually, we can harbor things that we keep in our hearts day after day, month after month, year after year. You are not even wicked. You're not even wicked. And the least little thing offends you. He that is easily offended, you have not the perfect Ahava of Yah. That's why you're so damn easily offended. You don't have nothing in your heart but fat, greasy wickedness. I ain't taking nothing back. Hallelujah. We got to prepare ourselves for the oven. The Holocaust is nothing like what we're about to embrace. Come on, Yisrael. The wicked shall do wickedly, and, they, and none, not none, shall be understand. They will not have any insight. We won't be diligent about what Yah commands us. That's what being is. You have no insight, no knowledge about what's taking place. Because if you did, you will know that the fear of Yah, the Yare of Yah, will lead you to repentance. You know that you will get that fear in your heart, the reverence of Yah, the fear of Yah, the Yare will cause you to repent of your wicked ways. You are not these things, the things I used to do. I don't do them no more since the Torah was placed in my bosom. Or oh, the way I used to walk. I don't walk no more since the light of Yahshua came through the Torah of Yah. Oh, the way I used to act, I will not walk that way anymore. Since the Eda of Yah is real in my heart, you won't do that. You won't assault Yah. You won't offend Yah. You will not. I don't care what circumstances I go through with Ach. At the end of the day, I don't care how I fuss. I don't care how I talk. It is one thing that is prevalent after it's all over. At the end of the day, come here, Abner. Get on up here with your dreamy, sleepy eyes. At the end of the day, I don't care how the difficult the day has been. When we finish the job, as old Ach Yosef, I said, give me a hug, man. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, I do that. All right. Yeah, but I don't care how fuss. Finish it up. I don't want the sun to go down on my evil. And you're wicked if you let the sun go down upon your wrath. You're angry. I will never separate from my ark with some kind of alt in my bosom against him. I won't do that. Hallelujah. You're all, all for quiet. That's all right. If you all are quiet, can you imagine? The homes are quiet too. Hallelujah. He said, and none shall understand, but that's what we need. He said, but the wise, the sokhal, those that are circumspect, those that have knowledge of Torah, but the wise, those that are able to instruct, to teach, to guide us, but the wise, he says, uh, shall understand. We need men to understand. We need wise men. We need wise bath of Tizayon, mothers that are wise to teach and to show the young women to strengthen the heads of their husband. Is not, are we not the, the bride of Yahshua HaMashiach? Does he not strengthen us in all things? Does he not teach us the way we should walk? Is he a proper man? Sure he is. He's a real man. 
He teaches us how to walk. His woman cannot, there's nothing more embarrassing than a woman bringing a man to shame. Ain't nothing. Ain't nothing more embarrassing than she talking back or in front of people just speaking. There's nothing more wicked than that. There's nothing more wicked when he says something to her and she responds in a way and others, and people are not stupid, they can't see that. You're not going to do that with me. You got one time to do that with me. You got one time to do that with me. You're not going to, yeah, you're not going to do it with me. There's nothing more corrupt than that. We as a woman, we as the bride of Yahshua, we, we speak to Yah any kind of way. You can't tell me what to do. It's like the wife, I'm not doing that, I'm a woman too. You're not going to tell me that this is what I want to do and this is what I'm going to do. That's what we tell Yah is wrong. That's what we tell Yah is wrong. Yes. Yah gives us the perfect order of that of a Hebraic house. Uh, that the young daughter, until she got a husband, uh, she stayed there with the man of the house. Uh, with the father, for father died, she had uncles. Uh, and she had those that died and the beauty of what a wife is. Uh, they saw, she saw his, their actions with their wives, their honor. That's why Yah commands us to love. That's why He loved us. Did not Yah so love the world He gave His only begotten Son? He loves His assembly. That's why He commands us as men to love our wives. To love them. To take care of every need, Yisra'ah. Yeah. That's what He said. And He says to you beautiful Baptists, and you have had a husband to know how to love you. Teach these young women how to love their husband. Because they don't know how to. You don't sit around with your damn wickedness and harboring things in you uh, and you express that to your daughters uh, and the daughters of Tizion and they act just as naughty as you. You don't do that. It's wrong. It is the truth, man. I'm not taking one word back. Nothing. I don't flinch either. Hallelujah. So we need men to understand. To understand how as a nation of people Will we be able to buy and sell? Well, what are we going to be able to buy and sell? What are we looking to buy? What are we looking to sell? Just from that standpoint, what are you? What do you have to sell? You have nothing to sell. The vast population, 1% of the people of the population, less than 1%, owns 42% of the wealth here in America. Is that right? Is that right? Less than 1%? There are 310 million people in America. Less than 1%? Less than 3 million people own all the wealth? They own 40, nearly half of it? And that's not the ones that are in between. So what are we going to buy? What are we going to sell? They don't even pay you enough on the job. The money's not kept back by fraudulent activity. That's why there's so much hurt in this land. There's so wickedness in the land. Mainly, mainly the owners with the money they kept it back by deceit and fraud to their own hurt. Instead of paying that little mother $12 an hour, they pay her $5 an hour or bare minimum. Just enough for her to get back. Just enough for her to get back. And if we think that the world is going to embrace us, that they're going to just look at us and take care of and give us jobs, you are silly as hell. There are tens of thousands, millions coming out of college already, and they can't find a damn thing. And the ones lashed in the year before that, they have spent eighty, hundred thousand dollars to get a four-year degree, and they barely making twelve, fifteen thousand dollars a year, working two or three jobs. And that's a fact. You can deceive your own self, but it's a fact. I, don't, I, I may have to go back over this again, but that's all right. All right. Hallelujah. Turn, uh, listen to this, uh, this expose here, this truth here in the book of Ezra. He speaks about the time of the end. This is what he does. Ezra, third Ezra, third Ezra, third Ezra, chapter 7, verse 18. I want to move quickly. He says this. This is the utterance of this prophet. He says, nevertheless, the Sadiq, the righteous. Are we the righteous of Yah? He says, the righteous shall, shall suffer. He uses the word straight or stray. They shall suffer, Sarah. 
There shall be an anguish upon them. There shall be an adversarial for an enemy to oppress them, to oppress their minds. And the Sudik today, they're suffering. They're really suffering, even in this hour. They're suffering in their conscience, in their minds, in their logics. They're suffering greatly. But he speaks about a time that is much more adverse than what we're in. He speaks about the akhrith. He said, nevertheless, the righteous shall suffer straight things. He says, and, and tigva, and tigva for why? They shall, in essence, hope they shall look beyond the narrow restraints that they are bound to. They shall tigva why? For they have done wickedly, for, the, for they that have done wickedly have suffered the Sarah things, and yet shall not see the why. We have done wickedly, and we're going to suffer the straits. We have done wrong before, yeah, we have practiced things that were not advantageous to him, and he said we're going to have to suffer, and we're not going to be able to see why. And he said to me, this is what the Malak said to me. Uh, he said, there is no judge above Yah. So we can judge any way we want to. Uh, but he lets us know when Yah judges, he judges Sadiq. He judges righteously. I don't care how you try to compromise in your own self. Why do I deserve this? Uh, then what did he do to deserve what you have offered unto him? So there is no judge above Yah, Almighty Yahweh, and none that has understanding above the highest. And yet he said, you that are prudent, you that are sakal, I will open up my wide wisdom unto you, that you can teach to Yisrael that their tegva may be wide, that they can see beyond the great agony and the, and the great trials that they are enduring. They don't have to worry about buying bread or having food because uh, he will send the raven to bring bread. Uh, he will send the sparrow to bring bread unto Yisrael. Yeah. He's going to do that. Uh, he has not changed. If he did it for wicked people, then uh, he's going to amplify that even greater in this either. Either it is the truth or it is a lie. And if he did it one time, he can do it again. And not only can he, he is going uh, to do it again. That's why he is going to put us in the street. Is he the one that caused uh, Yosef to go into slavery, into Misraim, uh, and then his brother, his father, and 70 of them, uh, because of the land was parched and dry, there was a famine. Uh, who is the one that created the famine? Uh, it was Yah. Is not that a famine for the hearing of the word today? Uh, and he caused them to go into that land. Uh, and as Isaac came, pointed out, he gave them the best of the land. They had the furrow of the soil. They had Goshen. And when the terror of Yah came through, it touched them at the Goshen. Uh, even we are in Misraim in Egypt, uh, among the Goyim, the heathens. Uh, that which Yah shall sin shall not come not, uh, shall not destroy our imuna. We will be able to buy, we will be able to buy our faith, uh, redeem ourselves. We will be able to buy and offer unto him the right offering. A biscuit is not going to do that. It's not going to do it. We eat one hour and two hours later, we're hungry, are we not? Talk to me, all right? So that's not going to do it. That's not going to do it. We're going to have to buy something greater than a loaf of bread. Or some fat back meat. Hallelujah. For there are many that perish in this life. Why do we perish? He said, because they have ma'as, they have rejected. They have despised. They have hated they have refused the Torah of Yah that is set before them. Now you hear what Yah says? Is, does it say that? Listen, you that have what we call the missing books in Ezra, 3rd Ezra, chapter 7, and verse 20, for there are many that perish in this life because they have ma'as, they have despised the Torah of Yah. That is set before them. You cannot despise. You cannot hate the Shabbat. You cannot hate his name. You cannot hate loving Yah with all. You cannot hate loving your, uh, your heart. They have despised what Yah says. This is what the prophet said. They have despised the Torah of Yah. They have despised that. And he says, for Yah has given this Sarah has brought them into a position whereby they are bound, whereby they can call on no one but him. Whereby there is no confidence in no one but 
him. Not in your ark, not in a reak, not in a hole, not in a brother. You're going to call on that name. You understand? You're not going to look for wife, husband, son, or daughter. You're going to look to him. He's going to put us in that straight that you're going to call upon him. You're not going to say, husband, where are you? You're going to say, wife, children. You're going to call on Yah. He said, Yah has given straight a sarah. He has given straight commandment, such as came, what they should do to live, even as they came, and what they shall observe to avoid punishment. He has given us, he has put us in a position that we, have, we watch things that we should do and things that we should not do. These things we don't do because we know that there is ovon, there is a punishment from Yah that is coming unto us. He has put us in that. That's why a wise man, he is, uh, he is prudent, he is, uh, he is sakal, uh, he, is, he is circumspect. He looks at things, he, gov- he watches things. And he understands by the mere watching of things. These things shall come, Yisra'ya. Verse 22, he gives us confidence here. Nevertheless, they were not obedient to him, to Yah, but they spoke against Yah, and they imagined vain things. And they deceived themselves by their wicked deeds. We're guilty of that one, are we not? Our vain thoughts, sure, they're empty. We deceive ourselves by our own wicked deeds. And they said to the Most High that he is not. And they knew not his ways. But his Torah have they despised. And denied his Brit, his covenant, his allegiance, his alliance, his treaty with us. In his statutes, they have not been faithful. They have not performed his works. So man can say what he wants to. They can say, well, oh, oh, you just have to love everyone and love Yah. And that's it. This is, the, this, is the, this is the culmination of your love. To Yah, you keep his Torah. You love his name. You love the hearing of that name. You love the speech of that name. You hate any other name that uh, takes away from his beauty and his honor. You love his name. We cannot despise his Torah. The Torah is the culmination of the writings of the statutes and the ordinance of his mitzvah. That's the Torah. His mitzvah are simply these ten instructions of commands. And from that we have, uh, that, that has, we have derived what we call the Torah, the ordinance, the statutes, uh, the wisdom of Yah. So we must be obey all. We must still offer up the offering. We must offer up not just a big fat cow. We must offer up the living offering unto Yah. We must offer up the offering of Toda, the, 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 uh, the Zabach. It's almost difficult for some of us to say Toda Yah or to shout in His presence. It's a hard thing. It's a difficult thing. You have no esprit, no volume of appreciation. Something is wrong in us, Yisrael. Something is twisted in our damn wicked minds. In all things we should give Torah unto Yah. Thank you, thank you, Yahweh. Blessed be your name. Oh, thank you, thank you, Yahweh. Blessed be your name. Oh, you brought me from, from a mighty long way. I want to thank you, Yah, for one more day, one more day. Yeah, we ought to thank it for every second. He calls breath to shout upon you, you ought to that Yah. He said that everything we ought to get told us. And here we wrestle with that. That's a difficulty with us. We don't know how to say that. Woe unto you, you wicked thing. I don't give a damn what your situations are. He's one dying on the stake for us. We all have been done. He looked up unto Yah. When it was all finished, he gave up the, the Ruach HaKodesh. We have to be prodded, compelled to say thank you. We have no omen, no agreement with what Yah says. We sit like some damn dumps, a dummy. He has done something greater than that for us as a nation. He has brought us to the tree of life, to the Ezra of, of Chayil. Hallelujah, hallelujah. 
Quickly, I want to give you a word of assurance in Yisrael. And I want to show you the remedy that we must pursue in order that we're able to buy and to sell in the hour that, uh, that is upon us. So in order to do that, I must warn us not to be disobedient unto Yah. And here's the prophecy of the Nobi here in Devarim Deuteronomy chapter 4 verse 30. The instructions of Yah unto Moshe. He tells us this. This is not just a figurative or the uh, for the moment type of a trial, but this is especially... Uh, for the trial of this time known as Yaakov's trouble. In Debarim Deuteronomy chapter 40, chapter 4, chapter 4, verse 30. Yah says, when you are in Sa'asara, in tribulation, when you are in tribulation, when there's a great agony upon you, Yisrael, yeah, when you're in tribulation, and all these things, the agony, the distress, when your mind is besieged, when you're in these narrow straits of, the, of oppression and suppression, he said, when all these things come upon you, and he speaks of a specific time, he said, even in the Acharif, in the latter, yeah, in the latter days, when all this come upon us, the distress, the agony, the pain, the suffering, the affliction, the cries. He said, when all these th things come upon you, he said, if you just should turn around. <laughs> you realize you're going the wrong way, just turn around. He said, when all this come upon you in tribulation, if you just should. See, he doesn't give us much of a mandate. Do. He says, just, just should return to Yah. Return back to the ways of ancient. Return back to the ways of our forefather. That's why he identifies the latter days or, or the akhrith. Those days are the residue of days. That's what the word akhrith is. It is the latter. It is the hindermost. It is the residue of what time is left. And you know residue is this a little small. The residue. He said, when you're in those days, uh, he said, if you just shub, if you allow yourself to be refreshed by the Torah, if you allow the Torah to repair your mind, if you allow the Torah to generate the excitement uh, through the testimony of your Shu Hamashiach in your bosom, uh, if you just shub, uh, because the Torah will repair us, he says, if you turn to Yah, your sovereign master, he says, and shall be Shemach, uh, if you just obey his voice, just obedient. That's all he commands of us. Just obey his voice. That's all he wants us to do. And verse 31, for Yah, your Abba, he is Rahum, he is compassionate. And the Rahum is only Yah's compassionate. He is compassionate. He is compassion. Only thing he asks us to do is turn. He is compassionate, Yisraya. He is compassionate. He is a compassionate servant master. He will not look at the things. Three things as I was looking at that this morning. It says three things. He will not rafa. He will not abandon you. He will not forsake you, Yisraya. He will not abrogate his responsibility. First of all, he will not forsake you. He will not forsake us. These are Yah's words. He cannot lie. In the midst of all great, how do we buy bread and how do we have water? He is so compassionate, he will not abandon you. He says, neither will he shahath. He will not destroy you. He will not cause you to become to come to ruins. He will not cause you to rot or to decay or your, or your heart to rot and melt away because of what things are upon you. All we must do is shoot, turn around, turn back to Yah. Allow the Torah to repair us. Allow the Torah to heal us. He will not destroy you. And listen to this. He will not so half, he will not at all forget you. He will not ignore us in the midst of our great afflictions. Just like Azakim brought out concerning the trials uh, of those Hebrew Yisraelites. He will not ignore us, Yisrael. He will not forget us. Uh, he will not forget the covenant, the Brit, 
the allegiance, the alliance, the marriage. He will not forget the covenant of your forefathers, of your avats, your avats, which he has sworn to them. These are three things that he will not do, and one, uh, two things he, three things he will not do, but the things that he will do. Three things he will not do, and three things uh, he will do. He will not forget the covenant, he will not forget us, he will not forsake us, Yisraya. So if he's not forsaken us, he's with us. That's what Yah will do. So these trials, this straight, this Sarah we're in. That's why this wicked whore teach this rapture-like thing. Uh, but there is no rapture. We are going to be enraptured in the truth. Uh, and that's what's going to restore us as a nation uh, and as a people. But you getting caught up, uh, that's a damn lie out of the gates of hell. Uh. He's not going to lose one. That's why when he sifts the nations, uh, the fire in Israel, uh, he said not one grain shall fall uh, to the earth. Every, he's going to save all Israel. Uh. So the trials, we welcome them. Uh, we embrace uh, the very covenant that Yah has placed with us uh, because he's going to bring us through. No one else. You're not going to rely upon nothing but him. You're not going to resort to no one but him. You're not going to try to find appeasement in, in baking cookies. Uh. You're not going to find it in eating. You're going to find it in eating the truth. Uh. You're not going to find satisfaction in shopping in Walmart, Kmart, or the damn dollar mart. Uh. You're going to buy the truth of Yah. You're going to sell it not. Uh. You're going to buy wisdom. You're going to buy understanding of Yah. For these are the principles or the powers of Yah that sustain us uh, throughout the great battle of affliction that we all, uh, if we are alive, shall be a part of. Uh, and we might as well embrace it now. And that is the truth. I'll give you nothing that is carly, soft, cushiony. He has given all for us that we won't give nothing for him. Not so, Yisrael. He will not leave us, Yisrael. He will be with us until the end. Can I give us a vision of the time and what Yah shall do? There's only one prophet. His name is Hanak. Enoch. He gives us a beautiful scenario. I must read this. I have a few scriptures. I want to read before I close. I want to read this. Listen to this. You can always turn to this when you go home. It is in the book of Hanach, chapter 1. And he sees this vision of the time that shall be the reward of the Sadiq and the Rasha, the wicked. And it began in the book of Hanach, Enoch, chapter 1, verse 1. It says, the blessing of Hanach, which he was blessed. He was blessed. The Berechiah of Yah, he Barak, which... He blessed the elect. Are we not the elect of Yadabur here? So he has blessed us with this vision that he has seen uh, that we can know what shall be. Which he has blessed the elect uh, and the Sadiq uh, who will be present. Who will be present? Do you hear that? Uh, we're present today, are we not? Uh, but he said, who shall be present on the day uh, of tribulation? Those that shall be alive on the day of tribulation at the time of the removal of all the wicked ones. So he has blessed us. He has poured out the berachaya of Yah upon us. He's blessing us with wisdom and understanding of this matter. No man is going to be able to buy. You're not going to be. He's selling us this now. That we don't have to sell it. We buy this by, by faith. So when the hour comes, we don't have to sell out. You, you know, in my days, you're the, the, the same thing today. If you did what they call a snitch, you were a sellout. You, man, you sold us out. Come on, you can't be selling us out. You can't be no sellout, man. So we can't sell out, yeah. So he blessed the elect. For those that shall be in the time of the tribulation, the book of Hanak, chapter 1, verse 1. <clears throat> in the days of tribulation, at the time of the removal of all the wicked ones. He's going to remove all the wicked ones. All of them. Their bones and all. He's going to remove them all. For it has polluted the earth. And Enoch, the blessed and the sadiq man of Yahweh, took up his parable, this mushli, which his eye and his eyes were open, and he saw it. He saw it. His spiritual mental faculties were open, and he saw it and said, uh, he said, this is a Chodesh vision from the heavens, which the Melachim show me, 
And I heard from them everything. I understood what they said because they are the ministering Ruachim of Yah. That's what the that's what the Melachim or the Melach does. He come to minister the power of Torah unto us, that our hearts are satisfied to witness of that truth. He said, I look not for this generation that I am in. You see this? I look not for this generation, but for the distant one that is to come. Are we not a distant generation from Iraq? He said, not this generation this is for. So you must raise up the sakhal, prudent and wise men. Men that are strong. Their application in life is built upon the strong principles of Yah. He said, this is for those men, not for this hour, but for the generations to bow to Erin. And that, and that go to that time shall be that they shall understand. He said, I speak about the elect, the Bokhir, the elect ones, and concerning them. That's what this prophecy is about. It's about the elect ones. This concerns us. He said, and I took up the Mishli saying, Yahweh of the universe, the Kadosh or the Kodash great one, will come forth from his dwelling, from his throne of mercies. He says, and from there he will march up upon Mount Ocher Saniya, and appear in his camp, emerging from heaven with a mighty power, and everyone shall be afraid. And he said, those that are the watchmen, they shall quiver, they shall shake in their boots. They shall be in trepidation and terrified. And everyone, he did not say some would not. When Yah rises up from his throne, the earth is going to shake. He gives us examples of that. What is the thing that storm that went through Washington and Virginia last night? It is, I was looking at that this morning as a name for it. It is not a tornado or a hurricane, but it has all the effects. Nearly two million people without power in this kind of weather. It is the heat that caused the clouds. And I looked at pictures of the clouds. They, it's like, the, it's like a ocean waves flowing in. And, and, and they stretch out for 240, 50 miles. And the storm is violent and the rain torrential. Breaking down trees and the winds are sustained at about 50 to 60 miles an hour. It's not a tornado. It's not a hurricane. And it developed because of the heat. The intense heat. It is stored in the heat. And when the heat of his anger rises up, everyone is going to be afraid. That kind of storm, everybody's afraid. That kind of weather, everybody's afraid. I don't care how bold they think they are, they are afraid. When the house shakes, everybody's afraid. When the thunder rolls down like that, everybody's afraid. You understand? They get quiet. That's a fact. He said, even the watchmen shall quiver, they shall shake in their, in their, in their shot. He said, and great fear and trembling shall seize them upon the ends of the earth, the whole earth. Everyone is going to be seized by the fear of Yah. He says in Hanak 1.6, mountains and high places shall fall down and will be frightened. That's, I don't even comprehend that. I'm not going to try to express that. I understand that in the metaphor of the figurative, uh, that those that think they're mighty and strong uh, and those that uh, think that they can supplant Yah, he said they're going to tremble. But he's talking about the literal mountains uh, shall bow and fall before Yah and they shall be afraid. And the high hills shall be made low and they shall melt like honeycomb uh, before the flame as Azakin has pointed out to us. Uh, it is the power of his word that divides even the mountains. Uh, the power of his word shall cause the flames uh, of his utterance uh, shall divide uh, the Sadiq from the wicked Yisrael. He says, and the earth shall rent asunder, it shall break. And all that's upon the earth uh, shall perish. He's going to cause those uh, that are not of Yisrael, they're going to perish. Uh, they're going down just like he did with Korah. He's going to open up the gates of hell and they're going down alive uh, into hell, Yisrael. And he said, and there shall be judgment upon all. You like that? I like that. Including the Sadiq, the righteous. Nobody's going to be left unscathed. And there shall be judgment upon all, even the Sadiq. That wasn't in Noah's days. He didn't judge Noah. He saved him. 
But Yah says, judgment shall be upon all and even the righteous. And to all the Sadiq, the righteous, he will grant shalom. See, you will know you're righteous. When you have shalom, you have the peace of Yah, you have the Esha, you are happy despite being broke. You have nothing, you have the happiness of Yah, you're happy. He will preserve the Bahir, he will preserve the Elak. He shall cause us to be preserved, and love kindness shall be upon them. If you are the elect, you have the love kindness of Yah. Not sometime, not with some, but with all. You that are the elect of Yah, you have the love kindness. You tell me that this Ema doesn't love this child because she cor cor corrals her and corrects her because she spanks her but answer. You tell me this Ema doesn't love him when she takes him out. Uh, of course, if I'm in there, I'm able to catch and to stop things. Uh, when she takes him out and spank his little buttocks, uh, he comes back in like a soldier, stretched up, standing up upright. Uh, you tell me she doesn't love him? That is stupid, Yisra'ya. Because someone corrects you, you mean that they, they don't love you or they tell you the truth? Uh? That's all Yah tells us the truth. That doesn't mean He doesn't love us. Yeah. Hallelujah. He says, And the love kindness shall be upon thee, like, and they shall all belong to Yahweh, and they shall prosper and be blessed. They shall be rich in the happiness of Yah. Something is wrong if you're not happy. There are folks that are in utter poverty and they're happy. I remember going down to, to the Bahamas uh, and there was this little kid. He was running. He was ragged. And all he did, he was standing by when the big ships would come in. And he was dirty. He was a raggedy little kid. I forget. I, I know what he had on. He was barefooted. He had on some brownish gray like shorts and a little tan like shirt. I know what the kid had on. I can tell you what he looked at. He was a beautiful little lad. And so he said, man, that you wanted me to sing for you. I will sing anything you want. And so back then I said, sing Amazing Grace for me. And he began. Amazing Grace, how sweet your precious sound that saved a wretch like me. Oh, I was lost. I want so I was lost. That's how he was singing it. Oh, but now, now I am found. Oh, I was blind. But now, oh, now I see. He knew exactly what the Americans wanted. So I say, sing that for me, sing that. And every song I ask him to sing, he knew it. Because he knew this is how he made a living for not only him, for his mother, his house. This is how he made a living. I was so impressed with the little lad. I said, here, my friend, here's some money. You take this. And he saw what I gave him. He said, oh, thank you. When I'm around people like that, my, I, I, oh, I, I don't give them a dollar. What in the hell is a dollar? Give him $5. I'll give him a $20 bill. Come on. I may be broke, but he doesn't know I'm broke. He doesn't realize that my condition, he didn't realize my condition was not far from his. If I'd have gone back home and lost my job, that would have been it. You understand? He didn't realize that. Don't we see that today? Many lost their jobs and on the streets in America. I want to finish up quickly. But that kid, that's all he could do, could sing. And so even we should enter in before the presence of Yah with songs and singing and making melody in our hearts. And then he will give us the gifts that we need to sustain us. Something is wrong with us. Something is sick, sick in our minds. It's sad. Hallelujah. He says, they shall prosper and be blessed. And the light or the oil or the witness of Yahshua or the light of Yahweh shall shine unto them. Behold, he will arrive with 10,000 of his Quraysh ones in the order to execute judgment upon all. He will destroy the wicked ones and the censor and census all flesh on account of everything that they have done. He's going to take a census of all those. He's going to know everything that you have done, Yisra'ya. Everything that we have done, it is recorded in the chronicles of Hashem Ma'am. You're not getting by with anything. You can pretend all you want to and, and pretend you're nice, but you're not nice. We have opportunity. We do excellent to all, ye, all people. I don't care who they are. Hallelujah. 
In verse 9, it says, Behold, he will arrive with 10,000 of his kedushim and wrought to execute judgment upon all. He's going to destroy the wicked one with the senses of all flesh and, and, and everything that they have done. That which is the sinner and the wicked ones committed against Yah. That's what sinners and those that are Russia, they commit that against Yah. But look at this in the same writings. Hanak tells us what he's going to give to those that, what he has prepared for those that love him. I'm going to close from here. He says in the book of Hanak 45, 1, as he speaks of the second Mishli, of the second parable, Hanak 45, 1, this is the second parable concerning those uh, who deny, listen now, this is the second parable of those that deny the name of Omar Yahweh. That's what it says. Those that refuse his name. This is what Yah says. This is the second parable concerning those that deny the name of Yahweh of hosts and the congregation of the Kodesh ones. Neither will they ascend into heavens. You deny his name, you're not going to ascend into the heavens. He said, neither will they descend into heavens, nor will they reach the ground. Such will be the lot of the sinners because they deny the power of his name. Who will deny the name of Yahweh? Those who is in this matter will be preserved for the day of burden and tribulation. He said, I'm going to wreak havoc upon them because they deny my name. They have supplanted my name with a damn Jesus and a damn Lord. He said, the burden of great tribulation is for them and try us. He said, on that day, I like this, on that day, my elect one shall sit in the seat of splendor, of excellence, and they shall make a selection of their deeds. Their resting place will be without number. Their nephesh shall be firm within them when they see my, Hamashiach, when they see my elect one. He said, their, their nephews, their strength shall be firm when they see him. He said, and those who have appealed to my splendid name, and those who have called upon my excellent, my splendid name. Hallelujah. He said, and those who have called upon my excellent and splendid name. And verse 4. He said, on that day... Shall I cause my elect one to dwell among them? He's going to cause that living tree that when he casts Adam, he's going to cause your shoe to dwell among us. He said, I shall transform heavens and make it a blessing of light forever. These little small things that we are enduring, we count them as small things that we must endure considering the great trials that your shoe has endured for us. He said, I shall also transform the earth and make it a blessing and cause my elect one to dwell in her. And those who have committed sin and crime shall not sit in her. He shall not even sit near Yah. That we transgress, we defile the Torah of Yah. For in Shalom has I looked with favor of favor. In peace, he says, Shalom. I've looked with favor upon my righteous ones, my siddiq, and given them my kindness, my roham, my mercies. And I have caused them to dwell before me. But sinners have come before me so that, I, so that by judgment I shall destroy them from off the face of the earth. And that's what he's going to do, Yisrael. He's given us shalom and comfort in his Torah today as we prepare for this great trial that no man is going to be able to buy. You're not going to be able to redeem yourself. We, we're doing a poor job doing that now. Our prayer life is not worth a damn. We don't know how to pray. We don't get excited about Yah, but we get excited about everything else. We don't move with haste when it comes to Yah. We don't move with excitement when it comes to Yah, but everything else, we move with excitement, don't we? It is the truth whether you buy it or not. And we that are the children of Yahweh, we are the light. We, he shall reveal unto us his elect one, the light, your shoe Hamashiach. And he shall be real in us. And we shall walk in the shalom of Yah. And we shall live at shalom among Yisrael Yah and among the nation of his people. Sif us, Yah. He is going to sif us whether we pray that prayer or not. What we need to do is ask Yah to search our hearts and see if there be any wicked thing in you. You know the wicked stuff in you. I don't have to have him to show me what's wicked in me. I know what's in me that's wrong. And you know it's wrong, then shoot, turn around and do it right. 
This is a stupid, wicked world. I'm not going to embrace the wicked more than I embrace Yisrael. I will do right by the, even the wicked, the most wicked man, I will do right by them. But I'm not going to discount the nation of his election, his people. Because in every great house, there are different kind of vessels. Vessels of honor, vessels of dishonor. Vessels of wood, vessels of clay, vessels of gold, and vessels of silver. There are all kinds of vessels in the other house. So I'm not going to dishonor them for, for this grandizing appeal before the wicked. We must love Yisra'ya. And that's how we know we love Yah, because we have loved one for another. May the riches of Yah rest upon you all. We're going to continue from this teaching, this preaching, this hallowing. I said to my Isho, I'm going to, to be very calm and collective today because it's hot. And it's hot out there. You don't even see the wind moving. Yes, it's 100. This is going to be the hottest of days. It's going to be 105 today. It's going to be 101 tomorrow. And then as the week proceeds, it's going to get cooler by next year, but it's going to be uh, in the low 80s. So that's wonderful. But that's all right. I'd rather be alive and able to bear this heat than to be dead. Every day is a tough day for me. He told us to have food and raiment clothing there. We're just that. Be content. We're pilgrims. We're nomads. So he's given us all the place just to lay our heads a bed. So that's all we need. You don't need no mansion in heaven because in there you're not going to be inside anyway sleeping. What do you need a mansion for? In the beauty of Yah's presence, what do you need to go in the house for? It's so stupid what this whole has taught us. May Yah barak you, all you that have joined us, send an offering, you that are listening, you that have been blessed today, send an offering to Yah. I'm not a beggar. May Yah barak you, let us stand to our feet. Hallelujah. We're going to finish up. I may have to rehearse this again, but that's all right. I'm going to make it plain to you. And simple. Ya barak you all, Yisrael. In all things, we do barak you, Ara Abba, for your Shua Hamashiach and your riches and your great blessings. Touch us all and guide us. We pray for your people in this hour of great agony and pain. It is not anything that these affliction that we're suffering, that they are great, that we cannot endure. Help us all, I do ask in your Shua's name. Give us strength. Encourage the hearts of those that have joined us. Watch over us. Take those safely home who have joined us and those that are listening by the live stream. We pray for our uh, brother Charles there in Los Angeles and those that are fellowshipping with him, as well as our uh, Zachain Tayonia there in Memphis and all Yisraya and the homes. Those that have joined us, we brought you for all things. Bless them. In Yeshua's mighty name, we do praise you for all things. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah.